Big Tech Garage weekly recaps, except we're not in the shop. This time we're gonna start this week on the road. It's actually the weekend, it's not the week. Uh, I am going to pick up the motor and trans combo for the Colorado build that we're doing on uh, Motor Trend for that special 4x4 garage build. Got a screaming deal from a dude on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, 5.3 with 4L60 four wheel drive transmission with computer cut down, ready to run with a fuse block um, for just under 2,500 bucks. And uh, anyone who's bought an LS, yeah, the, the 5.3, there's so many of them out there. They are a great engine. And uh, I love the aftermarket computers when I'm building stuff that's gonna build a little bit of power. But when it's something that I just want to start, run and drive good, you can't beat a factory ECU. I mean, they just all work so well right out of the gate. Uh, they start really nice, they run cool, everything works out well. So that's why I opted to go for this one on this particular project. So right now, what I gotta do is drive up to just across the state line in Kentucky to pick it up, throw in the back of the truck, and then we'll head on back to the shop. And then it'll be ready to toss into the uh, into Colorado. I got my motor off of uh, the back of the truck. You can see, I like to use these little roll around stands. I think they work really, really good. Um, let's me basically roll it underneath the car and then uh, basically lower the car down underneath it. Um, drivetrain for this is actually gonna be pretty cool. It's the 5.3. It's gonna be a 4L60 behind that into a ORD uh, Magnum off-road range box, and then into a 205. The nice thing is I got enough wheelbase to deal with that much uh, that much drive because it's a lot so i'm pushing the engine back as far as i can inside the cab but i think what i'm going to do now is basically test fit the motor get the body drop down over top of it figure out where the mounts are going to go and then i'll basically start working on uh, a bunch of finished welding on the chassis couple of things when I'm putting an engine in a project vehicle, especially with a custom chassis like this. Um, I'll get the engine in place. Now, a lot of people think that you have to have an engine dead center in a chassis, which is absolutely not true. If we're building a race car and we're really concerned about side to side bias, then we definitely want to do that. But you got to remember in an off-road rig, there's a transfer case that's hanging over on one side of the vehicle. So that center line bias is not as important. What's more important is room for the front drive shaft. So what I will often do is basically push the engine one way. So I'll take a measurement off the center line of the engine, usually on the LS, I usually use this uh, uh, water pump pulley, and I'll basically go from side to side, and I'll usually offset the engine probably about an inch towards the passenger side of the vehicle. That gives me a little bit more space on the driver's side for the drive shaft to come down. You also need to plan ahead for your steering. I'm going to be running a steering gear on this uh, vehicle. Steering gear is going to sit right here you can see the power steering pump is a little bit close to the steering gear but that's okay because i'm going to swap out this power steering pump for an actual uh, psc pump which will give me more room and the last thing you want to check is way down underneath here as you can see on this particular vehicle my plan is to run a belly pan underneath that engine skid so if i tilt the camera down you can see that the engine sitting up on this you can see the bottom of the oil pan and then if you look back towards the back you can see the bars that are part of the chassis if i bring a skid plate off those bars and up it'll completely cover the oil pan on this vehicle and still give me lots of clearance up here on the hood you don't necessarily want to get the engine all the way up as high as you can because that's going to push the center of gravity up that's why i put that belly pan these cab trucks Whenever you build them, you're just notorious for running out of space to get the drivetrain in there, especially if it wasn't built with that drivetrain. So by using this uh, LS automatic transmission and two transfer cases, I need to drop the engine down a little bit to give me more room, and that helps me with that deep sump pan. So what I'm gonna do right now is um, 
Basically, I'm going to take some measurements, cut some stuff out on the plow the table, and then we'll be done on this project for this week because everything else that we need to do has to wait until Christian comes in to film the episode. What I'm doing right now is just basically getting everything ready for when he shows up. And again, you know, that's what we do. We do stuff when people aren't here so we can make TV later. So I'm going to leave the Colorado at this point right now. Um, as I said before, we've got to wait to do any more work on that. Um, because we've got to do some filming on it. So I'm going to jump down to this side of the shop, do a little bit of work. Uh, we're getting this car ready to shoot uh, CarCraft TV on with uh, John McGann and Kevin Tates. They'll be coming in uh, later this week. we got three or four shoot days uh, planned for that. Obviously, we can't do any uh, updates. I'll give you a couple sneaky behind-the-scenes shots when we're there working uh, just for fun, but if you want to see that uh, Mustang get built, you're going to have to uh, pop over to the Motor Trend YouTube channel as well as keep an eye out. It'll pop up on the app, but I basically have to do a little bit of cleaning up. I also got some parts in that I got to prep for the bomber. Uh, it's just a time to consider the job. So I'm gonna knock it out. What I'm doing right now is safety wiring the rotors onto my Spider Tracks rotor hats for the bomber car. This is just one of those tedious jobs. Uh, it just takes some time and there's no point in doing it in a hurry because you don't want to do it in a hurry because it's a pretty intense process even though it's really easy. Basically uh, what I have for the car are these Willwood rotors. Get these from Willwood. Spider Tracks, uh, they supply the hats uh, for the unit bearings. And I'm running these uh, six piston Willwood calipers. These are the same calipers that you're gonna find on basically an Ultra 4 car. You can see they have a progressive piston system inside and they are directional. That's why that arrow's on there. So basically the way it works is the pistons are different sizes to apply even clamping force and basically align the pad to compress evenly on the rotor, but also increased uh, clamping force on the front of the pad or the leading edge of the pad, which is where most of the force is. And then uh, you wanna make sure you get the hardware kit for your rotors. You're gonna need some red Loctite. You're gonna need an inch pound torque wrench, safety wire, safety wire pliers, cup of coffee, workbench to work at, and then a stool to sit on because you're gonna be here for a while. So what I'm doing when I'm safety wiring is these bolts are already pre-drilled for the wire. So you just basically feed it through the bolt head. You want to basically get it halfway through whatever chunk you've cut of the safety wire. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it through, especially when you're working around a rotor. Sometimes you just got to grab it with the pliers and give it a good yank to get it to cut through. There we go. Okay. So. Once I get it through and about halfway around, what I do then is I then basically wrap the wire because this bolt tightens this way. I'm gonna wrap this wire around the top and then pull it around the bottom this way. And then on this side, I'm coming to the top of this bolt. That way, like I said before, if this bolt starts to loosen, it pulls this wire, which makes this one tight. What I do over here is figure out where the bolt hole is. That's where I'm going to stop twisting the wire. So I'll stop right there. I'm going to grab it with the pliers. Change positions here so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to stop it right about there. I'm going to grab it with the pliers right there. Lock it. And then the pliers basically have a little part that you pull and that's what spins the wire. So I'm gonna pull that. Two or three times. 
so I've got a good wrap on it. Now I can feed it through this bolt right here. What you're looking for when you're safety wiring like this is basically you have to sort of remember which way the bolt's going to turn. So if this bolt was to loosen off, it would be turning this way, counterclockwise. So you run the safety wire across the bottom of this bolt and then carry it over to the top of the bolt beside it. That way, if this bolt starts to loosen, it pulls on the wire and actually will start to try to tighten this bolt, which it shouldn't be able to do because we've torqued this bolt to 150 inch pounds. Likewise, if this bolt starts to loosen or starts to back out, what it's going to do is it's going to pull on the bottom of this bolt and cause it to tighten, which it shouldn't be able to do because like the other one, this one has been tightened as well. That's how safety wire works. It's basically top of one bolt to the bottom of another bolt. And this is definitely like a belt and suspenders kind of uh, situation here. What we have is thread locker to hold it and then also the safety wire to keep it extra safe because it's a brake rotor hat. It's a pretty important part. The reason I'm doing this is because now what I'll be able to do is work on the actual caliper mount. Uh, Spider Tracks supplies the caliper mount. This is the front mount. Um, this is the brake caliper. So this, these are a weld on mount. Um, so basically this will weld on to the front knuckle and by installing the rotor, I'll be able to position the caliper in place. When I'm welding these brackets on, one thing that you want to watch is you want to make sure that the rotor itself isn't dragging on the caliper. You also want to make sure that the bracket is uh, straight up and down, obviously. So what I'm going to do is I'll just tack it on to the knuckle here, but then uh, I'll take the knuckle off and weld it on the fixture table where I can basically uh, brace that uh, uh, bracket up. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put some tape, basically lay a couple, two, three, four, five layers of tape down there. That helps uh, space this caliper off. And what we want to do then is uh, come in here and just tack it. You do want to watch out for a couple things. You do want to make sure there's a high point. So you want to make sure there's a bleeder at the top. So in this case, you know, you might think, oh, if I mount it way up like this, you know, it's going to be up and out of the way of the rocks. But the problem is, is now the bleeder is here and the top of the actual piston is way over here. So you want to roll it down until the bleeder is actually the high point. And on this one, you actually have to make sure that you have room to get the bolts out because with this high steer knuckle there's a big brace in here and there's a bolt right here if i'd mounted it way up there like that there'd be no way to get that bolt in and out of there so i've rolled it down a little bit and i actually had to grind a bit of the bottom bracket to clear this uh, part of the knuckle right here but i'll basically roll it down on that and probably tack it somewhere right about there i'll tack it with the tig and then just leave it in place and then like i said i'll pull it off and weld it when it's off the car On the back, the Spider Tracks bracket uses what's called a double shear uh, caliper mount. And what I'm using is the actual unit bearing cup and the caliper as sort of a fixture to weld in this little filler plate that Spider Tracks includes with these mounts. What I'll basically do is set it in place and I'll tack it on both sides on all four corners, just making sure to minimize the heat input into these. Uh, these brackets. I don't want to put a lot of heat into them, but if I just tack it with a couple good tacks and then I can take this bracket off and I'll be able to weld it just on the bench and it won't uh, won't move around at all because I'll have these little uh, these little brackets on both sides held in place. Once again, I'll just tack it for now and I'll do the finish welding when I actually take it all apart. Obviously, you can see there's no rotor in here right now because I wouldn't be able to get to these to weld with the rotor in place. So I'll just tack them and then what I'll do is I'll take this caliper bracket off, put the rotor back on and reassemble it. I like to keep everything assembled like this. That way I don't lose any of the hardware when I tear it down.
that's where I'm gonna stop for this week. It's not the end of the week, but what I basically have to do now is prep this side of the uh, shop to get ready to start filming on that uh, Mustang that I told you about for uh, Car Carcraft TV with Kevin Tates and John McGann. Uh, make sure you check out the Motor Trend YouTube channel to see that car get built. I'll put a link in if it's up by the time this uh, video goes up, but it probably uh, will be well after this uh, video gets posted. But just for fun, I'll throw a couple behind the scenes uh, shots in at the end of this video uh, to round out the week. Uh, and once again, usual YouTube stuff. Thanks for watching, blah, 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 all that kind of jazz. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see and uh, dump in the comments below. And uh, we'll see you next week. and he put the mounts on backwards on the motor. So now he's got to take them off halfway through the shoot of the time lapse. It's going to be awesome. How's it going over there, Kim? <laughs> Did you do the frame mounts wrong or the engine mounts wrong? Oh, oh, that anyone can make that mistake. I thought you meant the frame mounts. No, frame mounts are correct. There we go. That's all that matters.